happening. So what we're gonna do today is a Volvo 940, similar to what we own. You guys have seen it in other videos, the sedan. Got a Volvo 940 wagon that I'm gonna be bringing in here momentarily after I clean up that skid mark that the marquee left, a re leaky rear main. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, we're gonna put in U-joints and a center support bearing. Before I bring the car in, I'm going to uh, press this bearing in here. That's the bearing I'm using. Interesting brand name, I must say. Made in Korea. It's a 609 2RS, meaning it's double sealed on both sides. As you can see, this is the box for that rubber piece there. There's a little rush in there for Ivan. So, anyways, looks like it's made in Germany. Gleckenkelwenlager. It's a Febby Bilstein. So, yeah, let's go press this thing in. So I got a little ahead of myself. I went and uh, just matched this up just a hair smaller than the bearing. So this will be perfect so it doesn't get stuck in the bore. You don't want to have that happen. Uh, what else? Something else I was going to tell you. I can't freaking remember. Oh, this. So it looks like in pressing this thing in, it's got some flex to it, as you can see. So it looks like it's going to really shove this thing out. But I'm going to have, of course, it's going to be supported on the bottom. Support this from the inside. I don't really feel comfortable flexing the crap out of this thing like that, you know what I mean? So, if I can find something that fits in here, we'll be golden. And what do you know about that? Fits right in there. Old bearing. Don't remember what it came out of. Might have came out of an ATV. It might have come out of a rear wheel bearing on an Econo box. I'm going to use that. I'm going to set it like that. I'm going to put this little fella right in here press away actually I'm gonna get it started with my fingers if at all possible here yeah. I bought this stuff from eeuroparts.com they just moved they used to be right down in Connecticut right near me but uh they're now down in Tennessee which sucks for me it'll be better for you southern boys fixing these things and girls but anyways I have to line this up Let's see what we can do here so there she is, all soaking wet. Of course, I start on it, it starts raining. She's a wagon, as you can see. What do we got for miles on this thing? See, Volvo 940 mileage is kind of, can't really go by what the dash is telling you. This says 232, 155, because a, a major problem with a lot of these is they have an electronic speed sensor right on the differential. You know, there's a little reluctor on the, um, is it on the carrier? I can't remember. Or on the, uh, behind the ring gear or something. I, I can't really remember. But anyways, either way, it likes to fail, especially when these cars sit. You know, they're at that age now where the original owners, you know, park them in the backyard, wait till their kids get old enough to drive them. And they drive them for a couple of years. They get sick of it, want something fancier, show off to their buddies with. And these things kind of sit until guys like me buy them because we don't want to work on them. <laughs> and they're actually very reliable. Where was I? So yeah, when these cars sit packed, that sensor tends to go to hell in a handbasket. And your speedometer won't work or it works erratically. So you're not getting an accurate count of uh, miles traveled. So just judging from its condition, it's, you know, comp I comparing this to mine. This is a 95, mine's a 93. This one's a lot more worn out than mine. You know, you can see the trim is falling off. <laughs> There's no trim on the, on the lift gate. I could just grab it with my hand and give it a little tug without even pushing the thing so the whole latch mechanism's destroyed. It it squeaks and rattles going down the road. So it's uh, pretty well haggard, as we say. Anyways, I'm going to go get this up in the air, get this drive shaft out of here and get started. So one thing I wanted to talk about this GoPro's all screwed up. That's not what I wanted to talk about, but the light was blinking before I even started recording. The little light in the corner of these GoPros, it blinks to let you know it's recording. The thing's been blinking the whole time when it was off. I thought it was on, then I hit it, and now I'm recording when I didn't want to be recording. 
Ah, man, I'll tell you. Me and electronics did not friggin' get along one bit. Just gotta rant a little bit. I just had to buy a new computer. Cost me a friggin' fortune. Yeah, so now I remember what I was gonna talk about. Uh, I've already been in here. I've already had this drive shaft that, not out, but I unbolted the rear of it because we had a problem. What was happening was this thing was smooth as glass at any speed. You know, usually universal joint problems when you you start getting up in speed, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, you know, you'll start to you'll start to feel a real high frequency vibration depending on how bad it is. Like sometimes when they, I mean, when they're completely trashed, you'll get up on the highway and the whole dashboard will start hammering, blah, 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 blah. you know, it'll just rattle the whole vehicle to pieces. And that's what I had in my El Camino when the, uh, I wish I had a picture of that. That was uh, 20 years ago. I, I had a 72 El Camino that the uh, universal joint wore right through the cap and through all the bearings. The bearings were gone. They turned to dust years ago and whoever owned it kept driving it. And uh, it wore right through and into the trunnion. The trunnion was right into the friggin' housing of the drive shaft. Like it, it actually was just getting ready to start cutting away into here, but the uh, the trunnion was a weaker material, surprisingly. And it, uh, it wore that out instead. Talk about vibration. I got out on the highway with that. Yeah, like I said, the dashboard was hopping. It was I couldn't go over 65. 65 was it. it. The vibration just got so intense. But that said, this thing here, it was smooth as glass, pretty much at any speed, no matter what you did. But when you were coming to a stop, you know, you hit the brakes, the brakes were nice and smooth, and then right around 15, probably closer to 10 miles an hour, you'd feel a little da -da 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 -da. And it would get worse the slower you got. The slower you got, the more you'd really feel it. And if you pull the parking brake up to slow the vehicle down at that speed, it would be even worse. It would just... Da -da -da -da. And I, for the life of me, the first thing that jumped into my head was wheel bearings because I've been fixing so many hub bearing units. I've kind of... I've kind of forgotten a lot of what I know about rear wheel drive vehicles, you know, the, the stuff I used to know when I was younger. <clears throat> and uh, universal joint was not the first thing that popped into my head. I thought, uh, you know, axle bearings on the ends of the uh, housing there were, were smoked. So I pulled an axle out. I actually ordered bearings for it. And, uh, of course, the company sent me the wrong ones. That was Rock Auto. Rock Auto and foreign cars. I, I've Something about that place... Volvo and Suzu are the two brands that I have experience with working on. And every, just about every part I order from Rock Auto for those two brands has been wrong. But the, they seem to hit it pretty good with the domestics. I very rarely get a wrong part with domestics. But either way, uh, so that, that was a symptom. And we got it up on the lift. I, put, I sent the customer up on the lift inside the vehicle. We fired it up. I had him put it in gear, had this thing spinning like crazy. As soon as he put it in gear, as soon as that drive shaft started spinning, this thing was hopping like a son of a bitch. This whole thing was hopping so bad, I was watching the little pins in the brake caliper. They were rattling around in there like they were loose. So, I mean, this whole thing, and, and you look at all the bearing, yeah, the bearings, all the bushings are good, all the rubber's good, and these pan hard rods, or torque rods, whatever the hell you call them. Yeah, I looked over this thing top and bottom. And these things ain't, you can't just go throwing a rear end in this thing. I mean, not only are they no longer available, but uh, they're super expensive if you can find one. When they were new, they were like four grand. Yeah, long story short, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but I pulled the drive shaft down just on a hunch because I was, my theory was this whole thing, you know, because you, you got to think of the forces involved here. You're rolling forward, the wheel's going this way, you start applying any kind of resistance to that rolling, it's going to want to dip this pinion towards the street. You know what I'm saying? The whole axle is going to want to twist. And that's what all these torque rods are for. And even with these, you know, they're rubber, so they, there's going to be some give to it. There's going to be some movement here, no matter what you got. You know, unless it's a solid piece of metal, which is, you know, not the most comfortable thing in the world. That'd be for like a race car or something. But for a daily driven street vehicle, it's going to have bushings. And uh, so on that hunch, I unbolted this thing. I got it down. I'll show it to you when I get it off. And it moves perfectly. And, and that was the first plane that I checked. You know, I checked it this way, and it's moving fine. And then I checked it the other way, and it only moved maybe an eighth of an inch tops. 
So that was a learning experience for me because I almost, I almost got slid on that one. They were the wrong ones, but I think as soon as I saw those bearings, I was already second guessing myself because as soon as I got to the pot, I'm looking at the bearings. This, the races are perfect. The bearing itself is perfect. You know, there's, there's no abnormal marking or burning or anything like that. No evidence the thing ran out of oil. So I was already second guessing myself. So that kind of pushed me in the direction of the universal joint. That was the last thing I expected. It just, the symptoms, usually when you got a bad U joint like that, and usually they fail on both planes, not just one plane. That's a strange one. And, and just the way the symptoms were, went against everything I've known my whole life. So anyways, I figured I'd pass that along because uh, that's a good learning experience. So let's go get this drive shaft out of here. Alrighty, so I got some, I got a 15 millimeter and a 17. That 15 fits the outside. 17 fits the inside. Oh, yeah. See? People always wonder why cars rust so bad. It was raining outside. Look, at, can you? See, I don't know if you guys can see. You see the little balls of moisture on here? There's like little balls. It was outside in the rain, but the differential is underneath the car. You see all that? If you touch them, they just kind of flatten out. But they're like little drops of water. It's just condensation from all the humidity. And that is what rusts your car out. <clears throat> you drive it in the salt and park it. That's what happens. It stays wet like that all the time and rusts your car out so fast to make your head spin. That's it. These, a little different way of doing it. A little nut and bolt. Most American cars, the uh, flange is threaded, so you don't have the nut, but it's a uh, nylon lock nut. <clears throat> so that locks it in place. Kind of a... Can't say it's a bad design. It works, you know. These things run three, four, five hundred thousand miles. I'm gonna save you the trouble of the fast forward here, and uh, we'll we'll skip to the end. All right, we've done another last one. I forgot to put the vehicle in neutral, so I had to climb up on the ladder and do that. All the years I've been doing this, I always forget. Every single time. Put the vehicle in neutral when you're doing drive shaft work. Or if you're changing differential fluid, that way you can spin things around and look at everything and check it all out. What I hate about some of the newer vehicles is when you put it in neutral, it kind of locks everything so the instrument cluster stays on, wears down the battery. That's a kind of dumb design, but all right, so here's a you can see, I'll wait till I get this thing out of here to show you better. Got you guys mounted to an O2 sensor now. It's the first time I've ever done that. Oh, it's just in the perfect spot. There's a lot of crap in here. Okay, now you can see what's going on. It's actually still intact. It's a little, you know, it's old, of course. We'll see how the bearing is. Okay. Uh uh, got it backwards. All right, got different size up on the front here. What the freak, man? Kidding me? Oh, I just can't get the whole closed end in there. Yep, that was it. No room, man. Figures I can't get it on there. That'd be a perfect spot for a ratcheting box end. Maybe I can get the 15 on there. The hell came up with the name box end wrench, anyways. Doesn't look like a box to me. Looks round. Like a loop, loop end wrench. I guess this just doesn't sound as good. And it don't work, anyways. <laughs> <sighs> Make me mad sometimes, you automotive engineer people. Looks like it was just getting ready to round off too. I might be well served to use my uh, flare nut wrench on the next one because 
I gotta do this three more times. Law of averages says on the last one, you're gonna knock all the corners off every hex on that nut. It's gonna round right off. Looks like it was starting to. It definitely made a mark on it, so. See if I can get a 15 inch, uh, 15 inch, yeah. <laughs> a 15 millimeter, or actually this is a 17. You need a 17 millimeter crow's foot. Welp, so much for that. Pretty much SOL when it comes to box end or crow's feet or flare nut wrenches because none of them fit. Not a single one. So I'm just gonna continue on like we've been doing. It seems to be working. Wish me luck. Yeah, things that happen. Okay. There you go. Just needed to be slammed. I probably had tension on it. I didn't think of that. The weight of the drive shaft's pulling down on it. That's why they have two. That, that works pretty good. Just like that, you're right side up again. <clears throat> it's not the quietest bearing I've ever heard, but it's not the worst either. Oh, man. I just have no energy today. <laughs> easier than I thought. This is, I would imagine this comes off of here. That's why I marked it. But, uh, yeah, that was easy enough. There's like a little disc in there. I guess that comes off. Oh, it's actually, there's discs on both sides, little dust shields. Yes. And this has a direction. This has got to go towards the rear. I'm glad to see that there isn't a whole lot of distance that I need to press this thing on here. So uh, I guess what I'm going to do is set this in the press and push down on this. Apologize for the weird lighting. You get some shadows on here, but it's the best I can do. Yeah, yeah. like it was made for it. Let's see how this goes. Set that there. Close that up. Try to get centered. Looks to me like we're gonna have to go up one. That's it. Bingo. So there's a little spacer. Not a spacer, but more of a dust shield. This is pretty rusty in here. So I don't know how this is going to go. Okay. I was just on flight away. There's, I've never seen so many general aviation aircraft in the sky at one time ever since I started becoming interested in this sort of thing. So actually this isn't as bad as I thought. It looks like uh, somebody put some sealer in here. So that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, you can hear that. Yeah, it's kind of skipping. So we caught this just in time. Got it, I had to do the U joints anyway, so you might as well do it all. You know, there's no point pulling a whole drive shaft like this and only doing one thing on it. One U. That's just ridiculous, in my opinion. Let's do it all, do it once, do it right. I see. Kind of falls away. I can I could probably pull this whole thing right out of there without much trouble. It's a little dry rotted. I for all I know this is original, you know, two hundred and forty thousand miles.
just looking at the old bearing, trying to find uh, a brand name on it or something. Uh, all I found was it was made in Italy. I know Volvo used only the best in those days. What a far cry from today. I delivered a 2017 XC60 the other day. I delivered it to the new owner and uh, he's under the hood looking for the dipstick. Can't find it. So um, I get under the ice, start looking. I can't friggin' find it. Because it ain't got one. Are you kidding me? No dipstick. We're going there now. My lord. Let me tell you. So the way you check the oil is electronically. That can't fail. <laughs> I could. Oh, this has got bad news written all over it. I see so many of these engines are going to go up in smoke. Boy, Volvo gone downhill, I'll tell you. Thank Ford for that one. Took them and ruined them conspiracy theorist side of me says that was done on purpose because gm bought saab an equally well-built vehicle the swedes had the best most reliable rust resistant vehicles on the planet you know and uh maybe the uh people didn't like that at gm and ford i guess you know a lot of bad things going around today so wouldn't surprise me in the least that was their way of, you know, your cars are making us all look bad, so we're going to get rid of you. I don't know. Let's see, it's, we're, we're in some sad times here these days. I'm just concentrating on what I'm doing right here. And it's all good. So what I'm going to do, see, I want to put grease down in here, but at the same time I want to put caulking in here so it kind of seals it up. And that's not really going to work too well. Grease and caulking don't play well together. Yeah, that's that. So got a little grease in there to keep the dust and salt and water and crap out of the bearing as much as possible do what you can stop the corrosion i was going to spray some fluid film or uh, lps in here or ams oil metal protector but i think grease is probably the better way to go because uh, we all know it's going to rust it's good they have these dust shields so that'll keep keep all the grit and stuff from the roadway from getting into the, you know working its way into the bearing there which is good so got a two-pronged layer of protection Carking grease. You guys in the warm areas of the country, when in the world, you don't have to do any of this. But up here, it's cold and wet in the winter. With a lot of corrosive salt, and it's getting worse every year. Last couple of years, I've been seeing calcium chloride trucks going around spraying the roads before a storm even comes. Even if the, you know, they of course they miscalculate all the time and. I'm sure it's to their budget benefit to lay down product when they don't need to. Mass is not known for its ethical politicians, that's for sure. You can just use your imagination about how that goes, but they spray the roads. Guess who pays the price for that? Twice. We pay for it monetarily, and we pay for it again when our vehicles go to the crusher in 10 years. And we pay sales tax all over again, and the state loves it. They just rake in the money every which way they get taxes on the repairs they get taxes on the pots they get taxes from your property and then when the thing goes to the crusher in eight to ten years you're handing them another thousand dollars in tax again it's a vicious cycle all right I'm starting to feel a little better the venting i think my food is starting to work its magic on the body here I'm starting to wake up a little so Go get this thing uh, put back on the drive shaft here. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna clean this up with uh, brake clean. Maybe go over it with some sandpaper real quick and figure out how we're gonna press this back on. So this flange here, the deep part's gonna face towards the back. This is the front drive shaft half. U joint was still pretty good on this part. I don't know what the reasoning was for the rear one to fail. I'll show you that one in a minute. It's pretty interesting how it failed. I've never seen one fail that bad in one direction and not the other. All right, so I dropped the table down about two feet or so. 
don't think that's going to be quite far enough. I have to go all the way to the bottom. Make sure I get this thing going on the right way. Looking good so far. Bearing fits in there nicely. Nice thick piece of steel. Handle the pressing. Okay, let's try this. Bearing races from something I worked on. Yeah, that worked. Now we can put this little guy on there. I don't know why this isn't sealing up here. Something's not right. I think I royally frigged up here. Yeah. I was pressing, I just realized I was pressing on the outside of the friggin' bearing race. Not a good thing. So I need to get something down over this thing. I need to get this thing the rest of the way down. That's why that cap wasn't fit. Yeah, so that's what it's supposed to look like. The bearing seated where it's supposed to be. So that was a big screw up on my part. I didn't think that through correctly. Which really sucks. So the only thing I can do is run it and see how it is. And if there's any noise, I'm gonna have to eat that one. Buy another bearing and pull the whole drive shaft out again. And it is what it is, you know. So these Volvo U joints are secured by snap rings, which is a little strange. Having grown up with American vehicles, got my new fancy gear wrench. Snap ring pliers seem to be working a lot better than the other ones I had. I got snap-on ones. They're a little small, though. All right, it's not cooperating. Come on. Damn it. These things are a pain in the ass. I like the other ones better. There you go. Alright. I'll tell you, these things won't come out of there. When you're driving, that's for shit sure. Oh, yes. There you go. Man! That was a pain in the ass if I ever seen one. Well, I won't bore you with this process because this is going to be a long, arduous ordeal. That's one out of 12. I got 11 to go. Okay, I got three of them done. I think I learned a thing or two. They just had the wrong technique. I should have tapped these first. Put a socket in there and give them a wrap so they. So I have to force them free like I've been doing here. Come on. Of course, as soon as I turn the camera on, then everything goes to shit in the handbasket. This last two, I took them right out in two seconds. Figured I'd show off how great I was doing. That's what I got. You stinking piece of fucking garbage. I don't know why I turned the fucking camera back on. Usually, well, the other two did off camera. I have to take my word for it. There's four stupid friggin' things. Probably use a 19 millimeter, I think. Get out of there yet, or what? Whew. These are a pain in the ass. American cars are a lot easier. At least there's no rust though. This is this thing's been driven in the winter like all along since it was new and there's no rust on this thing really to speak of, which is amazing. 
it just goes to show you how much automakers today is screwing all of us regardless of the brand they're just using the worst metals on the planet when there's better stuff clearly better stuff out there here we go there's that let's see if we can't get this well it's not going to cooperate with me i have to drive it back through that sucks Freaking eighth of an inch, I'd be able to slide that cap right off. It's amazing that these are still good. I'd love to know what kind of grease they use. Something that could last that long and still, you know, it's a, it's a little thick, but I don't smell either, which is weird. But it doesn't, uh, it's not all caked up, it's not dry. Let me get this started here. What is happening? Oh, there we go. We got it. Oh, the cap's still stuck in here. What is going on here? Oh, that must have been what was screwing me up was these things. The uh, seals on the other side there. It's getting sticky in here now. It's supposed to be 94, 97 tomorrow, depending on who you listen to. Needles came out. That's amazing. I'm gonna wipe this. See if there's any marking in here after 200,000 miles. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? These are non greasable U joints, too. You can see a little bit of scoring starting in there. A little bit of pitting, probably because it's sat. But they were still working. There's a little pointy thing in here too. Pretty neat. That's how you build a car, Ford GM, FCA, the rest of you. There it is. Okay. Bingo. There she is. It says GKN 3.K. Whatever that means. Look at these trunnions. After all that time being in the car, they are spotless. Look at that. That's how you make it universal. It would have failed eventually. This one would have went a little bit longer, I would say. Probably could have got another friggin' 100,000 out of that one. For whatever reason, the rear one is a mess. So this is the rear U joint. When I first took it down, I was like, there's nothing wrong with this U-joint. Maybe I was on the wrong track. <laughs> and you try to move it this way. Look at this. One plane is perfect. I can't move that no matter how hard I try. I'm curious to see what we're going to find in there. These are GKN. Yeah, GKN driveline. U110. So apparently these are a respected brand. Oh, and it does, of course, it comes with uh, circlips. I should have figured that. And these, I think these are, oh, there's a grease fitting in there. Oh, look at that. There's a hole. Sweet. And it's right dead center, so you don't have to worry about, like with the American cars, whether they're facing this way or this way. That's a good engineering thing right there. So how do you fix it? Well, I'm gonna show you. You just gotta get the pick and uh, get them to stand up right back in their little hole. Yeah, it helps to have clean hands. Kind of like a game you don't wanna play. So they're all back in place. You can see they're all stacked up in there good. <coughs> So I'm just gonna put a little of this in here. The Amzor waterproof grease. I use it on everything. Keep the water out of there at the same time. 
guess the key is you got to keep these things compressed like this, you know. Sounds like that's about as far as that's going to go. It's a little tight. I'm going to have to work that out in a minute. Beauteous. Okay. Now. See that? Loosened it right up. Perfect. Yep, that's good. So you get the gist of it, I hope. That's pretty much how it's gonna go 12 times through this whole thing. Alrighty, last one. This is one of the driest ones I've seen yet, but it's actually not that bad, to be honest with you. Looks a little burnt. Definitely, grease is definitely at the end of its life. Now we'll see what this one, I'm guessing it's one, wow, looks like I cracked the cap. I cracked the cap trying to get it out. It was it was tough. Oh yeah, this one's a bad one. Oh yeah, here you go. So there's a problem, lady. All right. <clears throat> so we found the powder. Let's see if my skills are improved. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit easier than what I was doing in the beginning. It's funny how we learn. So those are the last two I'll be fighting with today. So I'm, uh, I'll just pound this out. You know the routine. Uh, we'll turn the camera back on. We get this whole thing back together. And get everything marked nice. In case I wipe my fingers, wipe off the mark. I got plenty of redundancy here. And I'm going to take a, I've been taking, I haven't shown that, but I've been taking a wire wheel on a Dremel and getting all in here and cleaning all this up, cleaning up the groove. <clears throat> so it just makes life a little easier. And there's a familiar few letters in there, GKN. That's the brand. See, although the old ones, the old ones, some of them say Italy on them. Where did I see that? I forgot where I saw that, but anyways... The new ones, they're GKN, but they're, they're not made in Italy. But GKN is OEM, I guess. That's probably why they're 85 bucks a whack. But I want good stuff. What a battle. But we won. Oh, gotta put that, gotta put that grease fitting in there. We got that one done, and we got this one done. So now I just clean this up. I'm gonna put a little grease around that. See if I can remember which way this thing went. Well, looks like it can only go that way. Now it looks to me like we don't want to go nutty with the grease on these splines here because because uh, it's a blind uh, hole there, so. We'll hydro lock the thing, trying to get it back in there. I definitely want to get a, enough on there. I put a little in there, put a little around the outside, a little on here, so that should be good. There we go. That'll help keep the water out of there. Clean this up off camera. I notice there's a coating on here. It's amazing. Wish I knew. Where, where could you find a coating that strong? It'd be inside a transmission for 26 years. Well, this one's 24 years, but still, 20, that's crazy. Almost a quarter of a century. Look at that. It's perfect. It's been in the road salt. It's been in rain, been in snow. It's been 110 degrees. It's been 20 below zero. It's been through every type of weather you can think of. And here it still is. Why can't automakers just build them this way? You know, I'm sure this day and age they'd have to charge two hundred thousand dollars for it. But I mean, this car was thirty grand back in you know ninety three. I don't know what it was in ninety five. You have to have to figure thirty three grand maybe, maybe thirty five, 
It's a lot of money back then, but you really got your money's worth on a car back in those days. On everything back in those days. Lawnmowers were built better. Everything was built better. Refrigerators. I rant about this all the time. It's just disgusts me to see the way this country has gone. Nine times out of ten, I could all be traced back to political crap. It drives me crazy. We're just little peons on the totem pole. At least I am. I'm good with that. Anyways, I marked something on the inside. There it is. Sweet. Never had it somewhere. That's why I make multiple marks, because you never know. Stuff gets wiped off. You're trying to clean things and leave your marks intact, but I guess I might as well line this up too. Just make everybody happy. <laughs> I gotta put that uh, grease fitting in. I can't forget that. Let's see if we can get this lined up. Boy, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Gotta do this on the ground. That mark's at 12. And this mark is at 12. Oh boy. That seal fits really tight. Holy crap. Probably put too much grease in there. Whew, running out of steam. There we go. Okay. Yep, that worked. Okay. Got a little extra grease on here. Keep that from rusting. Keep water from getting in there. Perfect. You can actually grease the U-joints on this thing while it's out of the vehicle because of the way it's designed. All the caps are captured, so there's no danger in pumping grease in there. Like on an American car, you got one side, you know, two sides are captured. The other two are out in the breeze on the rear one at least and uh you can't grease it till it's all bolted up you just blow the things out you know grease fitting last one there's three of them in total uh, that's something i didn't pay attention to just keeping them all in the same plane so they're all facing the same way looks like i got lucky and i got this side but i don't think i got the front line up. nope i did not that sucks it's uh 45 degrees off. I guess that ain't too bad. At least at least it's not 180 degrees off. That would suck for me because I'll be the guy greasing them for sure. Okay, I got blue grease all over me. Now it's time to get some inside the U joint. One good thing to do is give the grease gun a little pump before you go hooking it up. In case it's crap stuck in the hole there. I used to be so cheap, I'd hate to waste the grease on my own vehicles. I've uh, screwed up a couple ball joints doing that, being cheap. There's one. There's two. Is that about it? Where is that coming out of? I can't tell if I got it all the way in. Okay. Guess that's, that's about that. I like the uh, U joints I did in the marquee. That one will probably come out first before this one. That job went a lot smoother than this. But those U-joints, they, they have little pinholes in each boot. So you can see it coming out like little worms, you know. That's pretty cool. So you know you got all of them greased. This one here seemed to all be blown out of one cap and not the others. But it did get quite a bit in there. <clears throat> all right. She's back. Back in our home, we just gotta put these two bolts in here and we'll be done. It's back. So yeah, <clears throat> I don't remember where we left off. It's been almost two weeks, but we got ourselves a new bearing. Repair my screw up. So we put about 93 miles on this thing since we did the job. I can feel that the bearing's a little warm. It's not hot, but shouldn't be any temperature in that. So, so it was definitely messed up for sure. <clears throat> you can see the nice pattern of grease <laughs> as it gets flung everywhere. So that's that. Uh, so I'm not going to film this whole thing over again since I already did it. I need to get moving here. I broke my light, left it underneath a car, and uh, 
we found that out in the road he had broken. Ugh. That's what happens when you get, you're juggling too much stuff. Anyways, I'm going to turn this stupid camera off and get this job done, and then uh, we'll go for a test drive, and that'll be the... That'll be the test. I'm sure the camera probably picked up on that howl. So uh, I can't friggin' breathe today. So you're better off not listening to me for the next hour. So I'm gonna get busy. Thank you, but... 